Since 1981, when AIDS was first discovered, it has now become a pandemic, spreading through human populations around the world. In the last 25 years, it is estimated to have killed 25 million people around the world. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. As the name suggests, AIDS is a disease of deficiency in the human immune system which is acquired during the lifetime of an individual and is not a congenital disease. AIDS is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV that belongs to a group of viruses known as retroviruses which are known to have an envelope enclosing the RNA genome. The HIV infection is usually transmitted through any one of four ways. Through sexual contact with an HIV infected person, transfusion of infected blood, sharing infected needles, and from an infected mother to a child through the placenta. So, other than children born to HIV infected mothers, People most susceptible to AIDS are drug abusers who use needles too often to take drugs intravenously, individuals who have multiple sexual partners, and patients of diseases such as thalassemia or dialysis who require frequent blood transfusions. It is evident from these examples that AIDS spreads only through body fluids. It is not transmitted by mere touch or physical contact. Therefore, it is advisable that HIV or AIDS infected people are not isolated from their family and society for their physical and psychological well-being. The incubation period of AIDS, that is, the time lag between infection and appearance of AIDS symptoms, ranges from a couple of months to many years. Once the HIV virus is inside the body, it enters the macrophages, where RNA, the genome of the virus, replicates to form viral DNA, aided by enzyme reverse transcriptase. The viral DNA takes over the host cell's DNA and directs infected cells to produce virus particles. The macrophages produce an army of viruses, therefore acting as an HIV factory. At the same time, HIV enters helper T lymphocytes and produces progeny viruses which when released into the blood attack other helper T lymphocytes in the body of the infected person. The process is repeated till the number of helper T lymphocytes gradually decreases inside the body resulting in reduced production of antibodies which affects the immune system. The infected individuals suffer from diarrhea, fever and weight loss. They become so immune deficient due to the loss of helper T lymphocytes that they are vulnerable to infections caused by bacteria like myobacterium, viruses, fungi and even parasites like toxoplasma. Had the HIV virus not infected the body, these infections would have been naturally fought by the body's immune system. The ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay test is commonly used to diagnose AIDS. Whereas antiretroviral drugs are used to treat AIDS. However, drugs can only prolong the life of an AIDS patient. Death is inevitable due to the gradual loss of immunity. Since AIDS has no cure, 
prevention is the key to keep it at bay. It is important to ensure that blood banks have safe blood and only disposable needles and syringes are used. Efforts must be made to control drug abuse. Sex education must be imparted to the masses so that people indulge only in safe sex. And condoms should be freely distributed and regular checkups made a must among susceptible populations. The WHO has started several initiatives to check the spread of AIDS. In India as well, some NGOs and organizations like NACO, that is, the National AIDS Control Organization, work to create awareness about AIDS so that the disease does not spread due to ignorance. These organizations encourage that HIV infection is not hidden or it may spread further. Moreover, awareness is also important so that society doesn't shun AIDS patients. Together with the medical fraternity and treatment, society plays an important role in the mental well-being of an AIDS patient. Therefore, though AIDS is caused due to acquired deficiency in immunity, due to ignorance and unsafe lifestyle practices, AIDS patients need our help and sympathy rather than our disapproval. The word cancer evokes fear in our minds, and why not? It is a disease that claims more than millions of lives annually in India alone, and has been the subject of a lot of research by scientists and biologists. Scientists have found that cancer is characterized by the uncontrollable growth of the body's cells. In a healthy body, cell growth and differentiation is controlled and regulated. Normal cells display the property of contact inhibition, that is, the inhibition of uncontrolled cell growth due to their being in contact with other cells. In cancer cells, this property of contact inhibition is completely absent. As a result, cancerous cells divide to form abnormal masses of cells called tumors. Tumors are either benign or malignant. Benign tumors cause little damage as they remain confined to their original location and do not spread to other parts of the body. On the other hand, malignant tumors, also known as neoplastic cells, grow very rapidly and damage surrounding normal tissues. They compete with normal cells for vital nutrients, thereby starving them. Cells cast off such malignant tumors, travel to other parts of the body through the blood, and start new tumors elsewhere. This frightening property of malignant tumors is also known as metastasis. The physical, chemical and biological agents responsible for transforming normal cells into cancerous neoplastic cells are known as carcinogens.
different types of ionizing radiations such as X-rays and non-ionizing radiations such as UV rays and gamma rays damage DNA causing neoplastic transformation. Similarly, the chemical carcinogen nicotine present in tobacco causes lung cancer. Biological carcinogens can be found in viruses called oncogenic viruses as they can induce the formation of tumors. They are also called tumor viruses and have genes called viral oncogenes. Even normal cells have certain genes like cellular oncogenes and proto-oncogenes which when activated under certain conditions such as mutations lead to the oncogenic transformation of cells. This cell transformation in turn induces uncontrolled cell division. Due to this scary nature of proliferation of cancerous cells in an infected body, early detection of cancer is essential for its successful treatment. Cancer is detected by using a variety of methods such as a biopsy, histopathology of blood as well as tissue, and bone marrow tests. In a biopsy, a piece of suspected tissue is cut into thin sections, stained and observed under a microscope by a pathologist. This microscopic examination of tissue to study the manifestation of disease is called histopathology. Bone marrow tests are also conducted to detect increased cell counts in the case of leukemia. Apart from these methods, detection of cancer in internal organs is made possible by techniques such as radiography, that is, the use of X-rays, CT or computed tomography, and MRI, that is, magnetic resonance imaging scans. The difference between CT and MRI is that the former uses X-rays to generate three-dimensional images of the insides of an object, whereas the latter uses strong magnetic fields and non-ionizing radiations to detect the pathological or physiological changes inside tissue. Certain cancers are detected due to antibodies produced by the immune system against cancer-specific antigens. Cancer-specific antigens are protein or other molecules that are unique to cancer cells. These molecules are usually found in the outer plasma membrane and they are thought to be potential targets for immunotherapy or other types of anti-cancer treatment. Molecular biology proves useful in identifying genes in individuals who are prone to inherit susceptibility to certain cancers. Identification of such genes is useful in preventing cancer since these individuals can be advised on avoiding specific carcinogens. For example, a person genetically susceptible to lung cancer can be advised to avoid a particular carcinogen like tobacco. Cancer is usually treated by a combination of surgery, radiation therapy and immunotherapy. In radiation therapy, tumor cells are irradiated lethally while taking care not to damage normal surrounding cells. Sometimes cancerous cells are killed by chemotherapeutic drugs which may be specific to particular tumors. Since the human immune system is unable to detect and destroy tumor cells, Patients are administered substances like alpha interferon that activate the immune system 
and help to destroy the tumor. These substances that activate the immune system are called biological response modifiers. In this manner, cancer can be diagnosed and treated with the help of several medical techniques if detected at the early stages. However, it is a killer disease and most often goes undetected by the human immune system. When Army Officer Lieutenant Colonel Shaw was in hospital after being injured on the battlefield, he was administered morphine after his surgeries to alleviate the pain. Morphine is an effective sedative and painkiller, especially when administered to patients just after surgery. Similarly, many other plants, fruits and seeds that have hallucinogenic properties have been used in medicine since ancient times. Some examples are barbiturates, amphetamines, benzodiazepines and lysergic acid diethylamides or LSD that help patients cope with mental illnesses such as insomnia and depression. However, when these same medicines are taken without prescription and in inordinate amounts, they cause physical, physiological and psychological damage. This phenomenon of overuse of drugs is often referred to as drug abuse. Drugs that are overused are mainly opioids, cannabinoids and coca alkaloids which are generally obtained from flowering plants. Heroin, better known as smack, is an opioid drug. Opioids are drugs that bind to specific receptors in our central nervous system and gastrointestinal tract. Heroin is a white, odorless and bitter crystalline compound that is obtained from the acetylation of morphine, which in turn is extracted from the poppy plant Papaver somniferum. Chemically, therefore, heroin is a diacetyl morphine. It is generally taken as an injection or is snorted. Since it is a depressant, it slows down body function. Cannabinoids are a group of chemicals that bind to cannabinoid receptors which are found chiefly in the brain. Cannabinoids are naturally obtained during the blossoming of the plant, cannabis sativa, the resin, leaves and flower tops of this cannabis plant are used in various proportions to produce drugs like marijuana, hashish, charas and ganja. All these drugs are known for their effects on the cardiovascular system of the body and they are usually either inhaled or orally ingested. Cannabinoids are also sometimes abused by sports persons because of their performance enhancing properties. Coca alkaloids are better known as cocaine, coke or crack. They are obtained from the coca plant Erythroxylum coca which is a native plant of South America. They interfere with the transport of a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Cocaine attaches to dopamine transporters, preventing the normal reabsorption process. As dopamine builds in the synapse, it continues to stimulate the receptor, resulting in a feeling of euphoria and increased energy in the cocaine user. Excessive dosage of cocaine 
which is usually snorted, also causes hallucinations. Other plants with hallucinogenic properties similar to those produced by cocaine are Atropa belladonna and Datura. Like drugs, tobacco too has chemical substances such as nicotine that cause addiction. Nicotine stimulates the adrenal gland to release adrenaline and noradrenaline hormones which result in increased heart rate and blood pressure. Smoking tobacco also increases carbon monoxide or CO in the blood, thereby reducing the content of heme-bound oxygen and causing an oxygen deficiency in the body. Smoking also causes lung, throat and urinary bladder cancers other than causing coronary heart diseases, bronchitis, emphysema and gastric ulcers. Tobacco is not only smoked, it is also chewed and used as snuff. Chewing tobacco often results due to the harmful effects of tobacco the government has ordered that cigarette packs must carry visual statutory warnings that smoking cigarettes is injurious to health. Despite the well-publicized harmful effects of drugs and smoking, both the young and old fall prey to the addiction. Therefore, both drug abusers and smoke addicts require counseling and medical assistance to be cured of their addictions. Every child, during the ages of 12 to 18, undergoes both physical and behavioral changes. This period, between 12 and 18 years, is known as adolescence. During this period, both boys and girls register rapid physical growth, accompanied by changes like the growth of body hair, and a sexual awakening. The voice starts to break to become deeper in the case of boys. In the wake of all these changes, adolescents are very vulnerable mentally and psychologically during this time. Adolescence is the crucial period that acts as a bridge between childhood and adulthood, when curiosity and the need to experiment and discover themselves is powerful among youngsters. It is this natural curiosity and the need to experiment that takes them to drugs, alcohol and smoking. Though the first time is usually due to curiosity, later the youngster is tempted to take drugs, drink or smoke on a regular basis due to their perceived stress buster effects. This might serve as a way to escape the stress to perform academically, an unsupportive family, or peer pressure. Often, some youngsters are seen advocating drugs, drinks and alcohol as cool, thereby increasing the number of youngsters that are lured to these vices. Television, movies, newspapers and the internet add to these perceptions by flashing cool images of smoking and drinking in popular public figures such as actors, singers and sportspersons. Led by all these factors, adolescents frequently begin to use drugs, alcohol and smoke repeatedly. The temporary feeling of euphoria and calmness that drugs and drinks provide drives youngsters to seek these out even when not needed. And even though this consumption proves self-destructive, 
This psychological attachment to the effects of drugs and alcohol that leave a temporary feeling of well-being is called addiction. The inherent addictive nature of both alcohol and drugs ensures that with repeated use, the tolerance level of receptors present in the body increases. As a result, these receptors respond only to higher doses of drugs and alcohol, leading to increased intake and addiction. Thus, the drug abuser or alcoholic is drawn into a helpless, vicious circle where they consume drugs or alcohol regularly and can't stop. Without any counseling or support, they become dependent on drugs and alcohol. Dependence is defined by the tendency of the body to display unpleasant withdrawal symptoms if their regular dose of drugs or alcohol is discontinued. Deprived of drugs and alcohol, the addicted youngster displays symptoms such as anxiety, shakiness, nausea, palpitations and sweating. All these symptoms stop when drug alcohol use is resumed. At times, these withdrawal symptoms can be severe and life-threatening. This dependence on drugs and alcohol leads the addicted patient to ignore social norms or laws to get sufficient funds to sate their needs. Therefore, Adequate moral support and counseling at home and in school is required during adolescence to avoid substance abuse among youngsters. Also, the addicted youngsters can be helped and rehabilitated with professional medical care along with counseling. Both Kurt Cobain and Elvis Presley have something in common other than being popular rock singers of their time. Unfortunately, they both suffered from drug abuse, which eventually contributed to their deaths. Excessive use of drugs damages human health and is known to cause coma or death due to respiratory, heart or cerebral damage. The immediate effects of drug abuse can also result in reckless behavior, vandalism and sometimes violence. Worse still, when drugs are consumed with alcohol, it often leads to an overdose, which at times results in death. Long-lasting use of drugs and alcohol damages the nervous system and causes cirrhosis in the liver. It also adversely affects the fetus during pregnancy. The identifying symptoms of drug and alcohol abuse are withdrawal, an unnaturally glazed look, disregard for personal hygiene, depression, fatigue, isolation and rebellious behavior. Sometimes these behavioral changes are reflected in unhappy relationships with family and friends as well as changes in sleeping and eating habits. A teenage abuser may register a drop in academic performance or altogether stop going to school or college lose interest in hobbies, and experience a loss of appetite and weight. Sometimes, in desperation, abusers take to stealing to be able to find money to buy drugs. Such behavior, understandably, is a source of distress to family, friends, and teachers. Drug abusers who take drugs intravenously are also susceptible to fatal diseases such as AIDS and Hepatitis B. Both these diseases can be transmitted to a healthy individual due to the sharing of infected needles and syringes. Sports persons have also been known to misuse drugs to enhance their athletic performance. They take narcotic analgesics, anabolic steroids, diuretics, and certain hormones to increase muscle strength and bulk. Of these, anabolic steroids cause side effects such as aggressiveness, 
mood swings and depression. In women, anabolic steroids mimic the effects of male hormones such as testosterone and dihydrotestosterone causing side effects like excessive growth of facial and body hair, enlargement of the clitoris, deepening of the voice, masculinization, that is, male-like features, and abnormal menstrual cycles. Likewise, in men, they result in reduction in the size of the testicles, decreased sperm production, enlargement of the prostate gland and acne. In case of chronic use, these effects could be permanent. In adolescence, apart from severe facial and body acne, it can also result in stunted growth due to the permanent closure of growth centers of the long bones. Keeping in mind the severity of the damaging effects of drug abuse, it is better to focus on prevention of drug abuse especially among adolescents, as they are most vulnerable during this period. Together with the help of vigilant parents, teachers and even friends, drug and alcohol abuse among adolescents can be checked. Often, peer pressure, high expectations from academic performance, and utter disregard for talents and hobbies lead disgruntled adolescents on a wayward path of drugs, alcohol or smoking. Therefore, it is important not to compare adolescents with their peers and not to push them too much to perform academically or in sports. It is in fact advantageous to identify their talents and direct their energies to healthy and interesting pursuits like sports, dance, music, yoga, aerobics, reading and other similar activities. The moral support of both family and friends is important to adolescents in times of crisis and disappointment. It is the time when teenagers should be trained and counseled to handle the problems and stress that life brings. Talking to sympathetic and understanding parents and family members like siblings and friends are very helpful during such times. This not only gives adolescents an opportunity to share their fears, anxieties and guilt, but also open their minds to possible solutions. In addition, such discussions help parents and family to be aware of the changing needs of the individual. Both parents and teachers should be alert enough to note any change in behavior and habits of the adolescents. In fact, even friends, if they are able to notice the danger signals of drug abuse, should inform teachers or parents about them to help their friends. Lastly, professional psychologists, psychiatrists, and de-addiction and rehabilitation programs can also be sought to help drug abusers. The objective behind such counseling and medical assistance is to diagnose the underlying cause of the abuse and take remedial steps. Therefore, though drug and alcohol abuse can be a fatal malady, it can be prevented by being sensitive to the changing needs of adolescents and by seeking professional counseling and medical expertise when required to deal with the addiction.